I love Brazil. I've been to Brazil. He's obsessed with Brazil. He's a... Bom dia. <laughs> swear your oath, Marine Sedai. I swear to speak no word that is not true. To make no weapon with which one person may kill another. And never to use the one power as a weapon. Hi, my name is Mari. I'm from CNN Brazil. Huge fan. Oh my God, I'm very excited right now. <laughs> Could you talk a little about Moraine? She's a very well-known character from the books. So was it a challenge for you to play her? It's a challenge to play any character that's well-loved and has a huge fan base. And of course, people have been reading these books since the 1990s. I've taken on Amy Dunn in Gone Girl, but that was a very recent book. So Amy had not had so long to incubate in people's minds. But Moraine is, people have grown up with Moraine and their image of Moraine in their mind. So, you know, I go into it knowing I'm not going to please everybody. I, I do know that, sad as it might be. But I, I hope that they know that I'm someone who thinks very deeply about things and I, I'll give as much of her essence as I possibly can. It is a responsibility because I know how loved she is and I know how many people treat her and think of her as a role model. The Wheel of Time has a lot of fight scenes and most of those fight scenes have you in the thick of it. So, Daniel, I read an interview that you said an accident happened in one of those scenes. Is that true? Can you tell us a little more about that? Unfortunately, that is very true, um, but it actually helped because it helped bond in us even more, no, no pun intended. We were about a weekend shooting the big battle of winter night and it was a very late uh, or early morning, about 4 a.m. And we were tired and we were winding down and I had a move where I had to step through and I missed time to step and I sliced down with my sword and uh, I just felt her hand uh, hit that cold metal and I heard her shriek and I thought, there we go. We just uh, ended production for a few weeks. <laughs> it turned out that she was okay. We rushed off to the emergency room and got her some x-rays and it turned out there were no broken bones. So it was a, it was a good bonding experience and it was a good chance for us to really get to know each other. So how exactly did uh, that make you guys closer, <laughs> actually, well, Rosa? Well, because, you know, there's a, I, had a, I, had, I, le I knew the level of man I was dealing with when, you know, we'd wrapped for the night, I was taken to the emergency room, and most actors would have said, OK, see you tomorrow. And I got to the <laughs> emergency room and Daniel was there waiting for me in advance, you know, uh -huh. through water style. He wasn't going to go home without seeing that I was all right. Yeah, and it was a scary moment. I think facing fear as a, any type of couple or do I mean, it's very important for us to go through obstacles together to face fire together. And we actually had to do that because that was a real moment of human emotion between us. You go through that together and it, uh, it strengthens your bond. Yeah, yeah. So, Rosamund, uh, you play a very strong woman. How is that important for the uh, female audience? How can we see uh, Moraine as women? I think one of the cool things about The Wheel of Time is that when people talk about all the strong female characters, in the series, they are not strong in terms of a masculine model of what is strong or what strength is. You know, they're they're very entirely female in their power. It's a in the wheel of time, female power looks different and feels different from male power. It's it's equally uh, impressive and strong, but it's different. One of the really remarkable things about the wheel of time is that everybody, all the characters, learn to uncover and reveal their own individual power which is very, very different for each character. Power means something different for all these central figures. And that is one of the really beautiful things about the series. Let's hope it's prepared them for what's coming. Do you guys felt uh, any like particular pressure uh, with the roles that you are um, a lot of pressure <laughs> at first, and then, and you know, at first that really motivates. I guess at a certain point you have to let go of that pressure for, because to me it feels like it kills creativity. And you know, there's also an image out there of all of our characters, you know, people they've imagined something, but I feel like I also have to run away from that. But go back to the script and back to all the books. And that's where I feel at home and that's where my work lies, uh, trying to you know, discover what, what is what is the essence of, of, of the character I, I'm playing. And what about you, Marcus? It's an honor to kind of play these these characters and knowing that there's a fan base out there who've been waiting for a long time, you know, like 
you know, maybe perhaps before we were born <laughs> for this show to come out. It's a lot of pressure, but you just know that there's someone, there's eyeballs there who are eagerly waiting to see this. And I think as an actor, you just want people to see your work and, and, and the, the time you've put in. So um, anything that's out there, I think just comes from a real protective nature of a Robert Jordan's work. And I, and I think we've done a, a really, a really good job at honoring that. Yeah, it's amazing. So like you said, The Wheel of Time uh, has an incredible large fan base. We're talking about a show based on a series of books so how to find room to put yourselves into the characters i think at the start we have you've got like the scripts there and you've got the book so there you've got these two amazing kind of resources to kind of bounce in between and to kind of form your idea of the character but then uh, there's a moment where you just have to kind of similar in that first audition you kind of have to trust your instincts of how you connect to this character on the page and 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 what you think the essence of that character is and know that there's universal quality that so many people have resonated with it all around the world but just to kind of trust your instincts i guess yeah and rave our showrunner he grew up with those books the, of the wheel of time and so he knows the heart and and the soul of of, of the the characters and the story i really believe we do the material justice do you know what i said i means in the old time servants of all what was it about Gwen's character that really made you want to audition for this role well when i got the audition i was sent three different scenes that were all incredibly different from each other. Now, this young woman was going to have a really wild journey and has so much depth. And I think that is something really refreshing. You know, she is a beloved character within the fandom and probably being a bit biased, but I really think that she's like one of the best characters ever written, ever. She has an incredible sense of duty and an eagerness to learn and, mm -hmm. you know, feels like she is destined for something great. And I just think that she is such an honorable, determined, independent, character mm -hmm. um and she's very real she's very real and mm -hmm. i think she's a real reflection of what a lot of strong women you know particularly in my life uh, mm -hmm. are like and what about your character zoe so how were you able to find room to put yourself into your character it took me a while to realize just how similar naive and i are what's wonderful about her is that her main motivation and drive is is the people around her and to make sure that they're okay and, and safe and loved and, and looked after and i think just the pure selflessness of of the character like that has been an absolute joy to play and has opened my eyes in, in terms of being more compassionate and, and selfless to, to everyone around me but as a mum it's something that i've been able to relate to heavily i am willing to do absolutely anything for for my child and i think that's exactly how Nani feels about her her two rivers folk. So yeah, there's there's a lot of really wonderful access ways that I think all of us have with our characters. Chatting to people offset too, you're like, oh, you were just like your character in, in many ways. So um, I don't think for many of us it's been much of a much of a struggle to to find ourselves in these roles. So you both play very strong women. And what I liked about the show is that the power of women is not forced. It's just mm -hmm. how it is. What's the importance of that? It often can get overlooked with the Wheel of Time. I think that's one of the, the major beauties of, of this world is that, like you said, women have power and that's nothing new to many people. It's a reflection of our real life. I mean, I look at the person right next to me and she's an incredibly strong, brave, amazing person. And, and it's wonderful to be able to see that translated on screen. I know this sounds cheesy, but you know, real life heroes like my mum and, and my mm -hmm. nana being, you know, shown in, in, in various different ways. And I feel the exact same way about Zoe, you know. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. <laughs> but literally, I, I draw so much strength from Zoe. And I know Egwene really looks to Nynaeve as a role model. And I feel the exact same way. I think what you said, love, about looking at strength in different forms. Mm. And this is something that you said earlier today, like with Nani particularly, she's very strong from showing vulnerability. Mm. You know, I think as women, we're very emotionally intelligent beings. It's just wonderful to play out all those different colors of emotion that we have. So mm. the series is based on a series of books. Yes. We all know that. So what's the challenge of doing something like that? A, a popular book series, I, I mean, millions of, of fans or millions of copies sold of the books. Um, obviously, that's the biggest challenge. The, the material is huge. I think the biggest challenge is trying to make sure that we 
stick to the source material. Obviously, there are changes that have to be made, but also make it accessible to people who aren't fantasy fans and don't know the material. Yeah, because we have uh, the expectations from the fans. Did you guys felt some kind of pressure? You know, the books are so detailed and, they, and they're so they're so good at describing both the people, the places, the, the, the costumes. We had an incredible roadmap that Rafe was able to bring to life. And I, and I think, you know, making sure that the core fans of the books were were happy was i think the first priority once that core group is seeing something that i that i think is in line with how they've imagined it uh, all these years after reading the, the series i think that authenticity will then you know expand into a, a wider audience uh, accepting it and 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 seeing it as as something that's very authentic and committed to the details and the cast is amazing uh, how was it to work with all of them they're fantastic i mean really fantastic and what's wonderful on this show is that everybody's passionate about the show and they're all away a long way from home and they've got each other and you feel that you feel that on screen and you feel it you know when you're with them these shows it really it really is about finding uh, your sort of family away from your own family. And I, and I think when this this group uh, of young actors came together in the in the room for the first time, we all felt the chemistry that, that really comes through on screen. If you could describe the show in just one word, what would it be? Oh, one word. Yeah. Oh, that's tricky. I'll go with inspiration. Adventure. Complex. Nice. Fire. Epic. Relentless, I think. <laughs> Relentless. But in a good way, right? But in a great way. Mm. Yes, of course. You know, as a viewer, it's it's just insane situation after situation yes. thrown at our characters, yeah. battles, you know, heartbreak, loss. Mm. It's just never ending. And you know, I know as as a cast, each episode just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and each season gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You don't know how it possibly yep. can happen, but <laughs> They find a way, Rafe Judkins finds a way.